Hello, and welcome back. Today I am... dying? It's summer, it's hot, and I'm really susceptible to heat and start to pass out at less hot temperatures than your average Joseph. I also have like really low testosterone apparently. I'm down to like 157, which is almost half of what the lowest level should be for my baseline. I don't enjoy living. Hey, let's move on. Today, I've run dry of side quests that I can do for the time being. As such, we're heading back to the main story. What is that story anyways? Well, far be it from me to let such as answers go unquestioned. Great. That <laughs> I, I ruined that sentence. So allow me to summarize. This is going to take a while. I can't even reuse the original recap because of the worst recording quality I had back then. Anyways. Once upon a time. Robots. The end. Nah, I'm just kidding. In the beginning, the world was not but a boundless sea until two massive titans came into being. The Bionis and the Mechonis. These two gods were locked in timeless combat until, one day, they slew one another. On the corpse of the Bionis, new life came to be, including a sentient, human-like species referred to as Homs, as well as little furry footballs called Nopon, and the human-like, head-be-winged Hyantia. But the relative peace that the peoples of the Bionis knew came to an end when a relentless army of machines, secretly built and commanded by mysterious machine humanoids, swept across the Mechonis' sword to continue the endless war between flesh and metal. The combined forces of the Bionis stymied the advance of the Mechon in a desperate confrontation in Sword Valley. The war may have been lost if not for a single hero wielding the legendary blade of the Bionis, Dunban of the Homs, and the Monado. Uniquely adept at cutting through Mechon armor and empowering others to do the same, Dunban led the final resistance with the Monado in hand and, for a time, drove the machine menace back to the corpse of the Mechonis. But this victory was not without its consequences. Of the many Homs colonies, only colonies 6 and 9 survived, and Dunban was heavily wounded. Not by Mechon, but by the Monado itself nearly robbing him of the use of his right arm. A year later, the Monado now resides in the weapon development lab of Colony 9, where our primary protagonist, Shulk, researches it under the tutelage of his engineering mentor, Dixon. Dunban himself is quietly recuperating at home with the help of his little sister, Fiora. Shulk has discovered a number of new facts about the Monado, like how it appears to be hiding additional power, and how, as shown by his friend Ryan's thoughtless actions, it is unable to harm the sentient peoples of the Bionis, and can seemingly show the wielder visions of the future. But the return of the Mechon sets the two factions of this war on a potentially climactic conflict. A huge host of the machines arrive, led by a new, unique, faced Mechon and besieged the colony, consuming the residents whole. Dunban, for all his recovery, proves unable to wield the Monado any longer, and the duty falls to Shulk, who seems unaffected by the same backlash as Dunban was. With the newfound ability to see the future, Shulk leads Dunban and Ryan to the residential district, in the hopes that the mobile artillery might allow them to drive the Mechon out of their home. But standing in their way is Metal Face. Uniquely impervious to the Mechon killing power of the Monado, it strikes the trio down. and they could do not but watch helplessly as it kills Fiora. Before leaving with the rest of the Mechon.
Shulk and Ryan leave Colony 9, with Dunban not far behind, to pursue Fiora's killer and take revenge. After traveling up through the Bionis Shin to the thigh, unlocking a new power of the Monado along the way, Shulk and Ryan meet refugees from Colony 6, which had been recently devastated and occupied by the Mechon. Sharla, a battle medic, joins the team when her little brother Juju rushes into the hands of another faced Mechon, Bronze Face. Both seemingly sentient and insane, Bronze Face lures the newly formed trio to Colony 6. Sharla tries to lead the party to the ether mine beneath the colony, hoping that the defense force had kept the Mechon from seizing the area. But her hopes are dashed when she reconnoitres with Colony Commander Atharon. All the rest of the defense force, including her fiancé Gatto, have been routed and captured. At the bottom of the mine, they confront Bronze Face, who reveals that he has a name, Zord, and managed to defeat the insane machine, who leaves them with cryptic secrets. Outside, they are confronted by Metal Face and a host of mass-produced Zord-like faces. Even with the aid of Dunban and Dixon, the fight seems hopeless, and the death of the hands of the maniacal Metal Face is all but certain. A massive creature known as Telethia drives the Mechon away, seemingly at the command of the mysterious Harms. During these events, Shulk receives another substantial vision of battling Metal Face at the top of a tall tower with new allies and the ability to cleave through Metal's armor with ease. A tall tower that Dixon just so happens to know rests at the top of the Bionis, Prison Island. They begin their trek to the Bionis head through Satoru Marsh, where we learn more of Shulk's past, and of the Monados. The legendary sword had been enshrined in a snow-locked region of the Bionis, and a Homs expedition, with a child Shulk and his parents included, had arrived to study the ruins only to all die. All except Shulk, who was rescued by Dixon. The party leave the incredibly super trustworthy Dixon and the other Colony 6 survivors behind, and as they pass through the Bionis interior, Shulk comments that it doesn't feel like the Bionis is actually truly dead. A terrifying concept, to be sure. Additionally, we are witness to one of the Mechonis' humanoids constructing a new faced Mechon, Face Nemesis. Of note is that the face is revealed to actually be a chassis for a pilot, and that a soul, that the engineer identifies as Lady Maynath, must be transferred into it. Arriving in Machna Forest, the party realize that they aren't entirely sure of how to progress to the Bionis head. Lacking any better idea, they resolve to head towards Frontier Village, the ancestral home of the Nopon located in the largest tree of the forest. As they trek towards the tree, they encounter the aftermath of a battle between a Telethia and a group of Hyentia, the only survivor of which is Melia. With Melia unconscious, Shulk travels back to the Great Magna Falls to retrieve pure water ether for Charlotte to use to treat her. There, he meets the mysterious man that had directed the Telethia to save them from Metalface, who introduces himself as Alvis. They are beset by spawn of the Telethia, which overpower Shulk's precognitive visions with their ability of mind reading. But Alvis proves himself to be far more than he appears when he takes up the Monado himself. He even unlocks a new art that would strip the Telethia of their powers. Before Shulk could introduce him to Ryan, he vanishes, and Shulk winds up heading back with a new mystery to unravel.
As payment for saving her life, Melia opts to accompany the party to Frontier Village and petition Chief Dunga to allow them passage to Aerith Sea. She intended to part ways with them there, determined to finish her mission to slay the Telethia. But Shulk, recognizing her from his vision of Prison Island, decides to extend a helping hand to her. A helping hand that is joined by the feathery, wingy thing of the year's legendary hero pawn, Ricky! Best boy. Deep in Magna Forest, the Telethia has been draining the landscape of Aether to heal itself after Melia wounded it. It's a hard battle, both due to its ability to read its enemies' minds and its rapid healing, but the might of the Monado proves superior. With the Telethia destroyed, Melia's mission is complete and the soldiers who sacrificed themselves for her have been avenged. Melia leads her new allies to the Bion's head, intending to beseech the High Entian Emperor Sorian, her father, to allow them access to Prison Island. But once she separates from them, the party is arrested. The High Entia have had a long history with the Monado, to the point that much has been lost to even their long-lived memory. An ancient prophecy warns of the Bionis reawakening, heralded by the Monado's return and increasing ambient ether levels that the Telethia are feeding on. Until the Divine Seer has confirmed the Shulk is of no threat, he and his friends are to be confined. Lucky, then, that the Divine Seer is someone the Shulk already knows. Alvis. Alvis is quick to have the group released and goes to report to the Emperor. Sorian, anticipating the realization of the prophecy, decides to push forward with the investiture ceremony to name Melia as the crown princess and next empress of the High Entia. But conspirators behind the scenes are scheming to take Melia's life, believing that her half homs genetics are an affront to High Entia purity. The ringleader of this plot is the first consort of the emperor, Sorian's own wife, supported by an ancient cult dedicated to the Bionis, the Bionite Order, long thought defunct. First Consort Eumea convinces Sorian to use the Trial of the Tomb to endear Melia to the people of Alchemoth, planning to have Inquisitor Tyrea assassinate her, regardless of if she succeeded or not. Meanwhile, Shulk, who had been killing time by helping with some problems around Aerith Sea, is struck by a vision of the assassination attempt, which features a Telethia? You might remember that Divine Seer Alvis was seemingly controlling a Telethia back after the events in the Aether Mine. Something shady is happening under the Emperor's nose. But there's no time to lose! We've got sexy assassins to fight! Why are they dressed like this? With that out of the way, Dunvan convinces Kallion, Melia's half-brother, to allow a group of strange Homs, and one Nopon, to enter the tomb to rescue her from the assassination plot. I have come to be judged on my legitimacy to the throne by the ancestral spirits. Permission granted. Commencing analysis of genetic data. Arriving at the end of the tomb, Melia encounters an artificial recreation of her ancestor. It reveals that a big reason for the practice of a High Entian first consort and a Homs second consort was to dilute the High Entian genetic structure. The High Entia were genetically designed by the Bionis for a specific purpose, and Melia's ancestors were determined to free their descendants from the curse. With her ancestor's blessing, Melia prepares to return victorious but is beset by Tyrea. Despite a slight setback due to Ryan touching something he shouldn't, 
The party, along with Alvis, arrives just in time to support Melia against the assassin and her Telethia backup. With the Bionite Order revealed to the Emperor, and the traitorous First Consort arrested, Melia is free to enjoy her ascension as the future Empress. Sorian, though grateful to Shulk and his friends for saving his daughter, still needs time to decide on what to do about the Bonato. But time isn't in abundant supply, as Metalface and the newly finished Face Nemesis lead an attack on Prison Island. Though stymied by the Hyantia's automated defense systems and the ancient creatures living in the island, it won't be long before the Black Spire falls to their assault. Even knowing of his potential demise in the claws of Metalface, thanks to Alvis' visions, Sorian makes the decision to travel to Prison Island himself, determined to unearth its forgotten secrets. Shulk, Melia, and the rest of the team follow close on his heels. Along the way, the team encounters statues that Melia identifies as potentially being of her ancestors, and that Ryan and Ricky comment on looking like Telethia. At the top of Prison Island, its ancient prisoner is revealed. A giant named Zanza. Zanza claims that he was sealed away by the ancient Hyantia because they feared his UNLIMITED POWER! He alleges that it was he who forced the Monado from his own being, and wielded it against the Mechanus. Zanza goes on to list the qualities of the Monado. It is able to control ether, which is the basic building block of life in this world, and mastery of the Monado means mastery of reality itself. Its form is merely an illusion, changing to match its wielder's desires. And the Monado is in shackles, preventing its true power from being unleashed, and is the source of its inability to harm the sentient beings of the Bionis. If Shulk were to free Zanza from his imprisonment, the giant would release the shackles limiting the Monado. Despite Melia's misgivings, he does. To the Monado. Your will shall be done. Let the shackles be released! At this point, Metalface uses a new Mechanus weapon, a spear designed to drain the ether from Bionis' life, to impale Zanza. and he and Face Nemesis finally managed to land on Prison Island. While Metal gloats and makes threats, Nemesis confronts the seemingly dead Zanza. She questions him on how many more he is willing to sacrifice, and this marks a change in the giant's disposition, becoming arrogant and hostile in the privacy of this mindscape. Who dare? At once! Mechon! Emperor! You're gonna pay for that! You bag of bones! Melia! Emperor, I failed you. Heir to the Monado. Huh? Sansa, you're alive. Give me the power I need. I am now a mere shell. The power is already yours. What? The shackles have been broken. Wield the sword, it bends to your will. It's changing form! 
With the Monado unbound, Metal Face isn't able to rebuff its power any longer. Before Shulk can strike the final blow, however, Nemesis steps in and takes the blow to her torso, exposing the pilot inside. A pilot that is revealed to be the thought-dead Fiora. However, Fiora doesn't seem to have any recollection of her old friends and family. She leaves, and Metalface, who appears to know Dunban personally, escapes as well. Emperor Saurian succumbs to his wounds, affirming his love and faith for Melia in his final moments. Shulk assures her that he would stand by her, and encourages her to seek vengeance with him. But perhaps Melia was right when she advised against releasing Zanza, as his supposed death seems to be a part of his own plans for the world at large. <laughs> I do what is necessary for the world. With the knowledge that Fiora is alive, in some fashion, the party resolved to pursue her to Mikaas itself, leaving behind Kalyan, who himself has resolved to form a united Bios resistance, and a body double of Melia, they and Alvis begin their journey. Traveling down the snow-locked Bionis Arm, Balak Mountain, they stop for a rest in Herrick Chapel. Here, the Hyantia had once sealed away the Monado, and it is here where the Homs had originally found the legendary blade. It is here where Shulk's parents died. The party find their way to the bottom of Valak Mountain, and, again, encounter face Nemesis. Fiora, or whoever is currently inside her body, desperately wishes to talk. But Metalface has other ideas. Having pursued her from Galahad Fortress on the Makana's sword, he takes Fiora hostage and ultimately reveals his original identity. Mumkar, Dunban's former ally from the Battle of Sword Valley. But Melia is not so easily cowed and strikes Mumkar with a blast of ether, disabling Metalface for a time and allowing the party to confront the madman himself. Shame of all that you have done, traitor! Shut your mouth and come on! That light! Before they could reach a conclusive victory against the former Harms, however, the fight is stopped by the arrival of the massive gold face, Yalda Bayoth piloted by Egil, the leader of Mekonis, and self-described agent of Maynath. He arrived to recover face Nemesis, who had acted outside of his control, and invites the party to pursue him to Mekonis. Arriving in Sword Valley, they meet with a supply convoy headed by Dixon. After filling him in on what happened, he and Alvis leave to work on their own responsibilities. At the foot of Galahad Fortress, the party are confronted once again by Mumkar. You scumbag! Think you can do it? Can you kill them all? <sighs> I wonder who's inside. Who could it be? Your dad? Your mom? Maybe that special someone! I'm gonna squish you like a slug! 
right here where we shared such lovely memories. A battle and two wrecked mass-produced faces later, he finally snuffs it for good. Just absolutely Disneyed. However, Shulk opts to try to convince Dunbad to spare him, reasoning that he's still a Homs. I, I don't know where this came from. Also, just killed two mass-produced faces, so, you know. Back in Alchemoth, Alvis meets with Lorithia, who is studying the spear that Mumkar had used against Zanza. Beyond claiming that they should be able to find a way to counteract it, they also make cryptic comments about their relationship with Dixon, who Alvis describes as being their elder. After wreaking havoc throughout the fortress, the party finally re-encounter face Nemesis. But Egil has seized complete control of its systems, leaving Fiora as a helpless occupant in the machine as it attempts to slaughter her friends and family and other people that she doesn't know. Realizing that their rescue attempt is a wash, Dunban pushes for everyone to escape, but they find themselves trapped on the bottom level of the fortress, surrounded by hordes of Mechon, led by Egil. Egil utilizes a device called the Apocrypha Generator to counteract the ether manipulating powers of the Monado. Without the Monado, all seems lost for our heroes. Some small piece of Fiora breaks through to the presence controlling her body, allowing her to throw off Egil's control. Releasing a wave of energy of her own, a wave of energy that Egil seems to identify as being Monado sourced, she fights to defend the party. Will you die for them? What is this? Uh, Fiora! Shulk! Where are you? Shulk, get back here! Fiora! is not possible. It cannot be. Far above in Alchemoth, Kallian's allied forces of the Bionis begin to assemble, with Otharon and Dixon leading the homes of colonies 6 and 9, and Chief Dunga leading the Nopon of Frontier Village. While the High Entia's refusal to participate in the Battle of Sword Valley a year prior causes some tension, the allied force ultimately comes together. Dixon leaves the Colony 9 forces in the care of Otharon, and heads out to find the missing heroes. The collapse of Galahad Fortress leaves the party scattered across the land below Sword Valley, formed from the fallen arm that the Makanis lost during its battle with the Bionis. Fiora has recovered control of her body, and the party ultimately reconvenes at a nearby hidden village. Here they are introduced to what remains of the machine people of Mekonis, the Machina. While Fiora's failing body, designed for operation in a face unit, is examined by a Machina doctor, the rest of the party meet with the chief of the hidden village, Mikkel. Mikkel is the father of Egil. 
Mikkel asks the party for Egil's death. Egil's desire for revenge against the Bios for what it did to his people has led him down a dark road. Dark enough that his own father sees they must be stopped, by whatever means possible. Dixon arrives, having known about the Machina all along, and pushes for Shulk to face Egil and kill him. Shulk, for his part, doesn't want to kill people and thinks they could find another way to stop Egil, to Dixon's clear disgust. With Fiora's body fixed for living outside of her face, the full party heads out to confront Egil in the Mechanus capital, Agnaratha, with the ever-trustworthy Dixon watching on. Egil himself is preparing for this confrontation. He seizes one of his face units, and, fresh off the failure of Mumkar's personality compromising Metal Face's efficacy, strips it of its memories. Memories that include Sharla. As always, I've got links to my Ko-fi and Redbubble in the description below, if you like what I do and or want my art in your things. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. More importantly, we can use our time and money providing aid and support to Palestinians, as they suffer under the latest atrocities of an 80-year-long assault on their human rights. Additionally, there are also atrocities in Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo that could use our support as well. I'll put links for those in the description too. And now, it's showtime! Well, that took... a while. <laughs> <laughs> do I need to do that? Not really, but I did! So, at least I won't have to do it again. Definitely not. I definitely won't forget the habit. Anyways, this is probably going to be a longer episode because of that recap. We're beginning our trek up the Mechonis. Today? There we go. But before we do that... That's the menu. I haven't played this game in a while. <laughs> collect, collect the thing, collect stuff. I've been playing Elden Ring! Anyways. Today, before we start heading up the Makanas, we need to help out Zarkort. Yes? I've really got a lot on my mind. Can you guess what it's about? Tell me in greater detail. I know I ain't one to speak, but she could have asked more politely. She's cold as ice, that one. Oh no, could you hear what I'm thinking? Ah, no way. That's impossible. What is wrong? Do you two wish to know in greater detail? You need not answer. Let's hear what this person has to say. It's my girlfriend. It's her job to keep watch over Makana's field. She works there full time, so we've got this long distance thing going. And with me being scared of heights, I can't go and see her. I'm worried she might forget about me if, I, if we stay apart any longer. I know how painful it feels to be separated from someone. Is there anything we can do? I want to help any way I can. Thanks for the thought. But what I need might be pretty difficult to do. I won't know if you don't tell me. What is it? Okay, I'll tell you. I don't want her to forget about me. I came up with this idea to give her a present. I'm sure a treasure called the Tear of the Sky will make an impression. But you can only find it on distant fingertip. There's no way I can go up there. I'm terrified of heights. When it rains, you can find tears of the sky on the fingertips of the fallen arm. Zarkort is too scared of heights to go and fetch one. Collect one for him. Collect a tear of the sky from distant fingertip on the fallen arm. Only during a thunderstorm. You'll go for me? Thanks. I know it's a lot of trouble. Let's assure that your issue will be attended to with haste. That's right. Leave it to us. But it's labor of love, right? I'm sure you'll be fine. So I originally gained access to this quest back in episode 49, when I was doing the food delivery side quest. Once you talk with Theo, I believe it is, the other guy on this platform, that quest becomes available from Zarkort. 
I didn't do it then because Zarkort's next quest involves going into Makara's Field. And I wasn't going to go into Makara's Field. So I've put it off until now. My god, you are slow at climbing. Just crossed. <laughs> Scaffolding. How do I get to Macaw's field? Oh, jeez. That's not good for me. Yeah. The distant fingertip. Where's the entrance to Macaw's field? I, I don't I don't know what's happening. Anyways, there's something to watch out for. It's that guy. Wicked Sallows, <laughs> level 95 unique. Luckily, he doesn't appear during rain or thunderstorms, so you don't really have to worry about him. Which is good because what you need is I think it's directly where he's standing. There we go. There it is. Oh. God. That's a nightmare. Well, we have that now. So, fast travel, I guess. Why do you have to be so far away from the fast travel point? Is that a tear of the sky? This is the first time I've ever seen one. It's so beautiful. There's no way she'll forget me if I give her this. You lot are amazing. You really climbed all the way up there? There's no way I could have done that. I hope I was of some help. You are a great help, Melia. Ah, I almost forgot. Here's a token of my appreciation. You collected a tear of the sky for Zarkort, but it looks like he has another request. Remember, he's afraid of heights, <laughs> and he needs to go up into the Macaw's leg to meet with his girlfriend, so we're gonna have to do that yes. for him. Uh, hey there. Can I ask you to do me one more favor? Tell me in greater detail. Yes, Ryan, thank you. It's about the tear of the sky you got for me. There's no way I could go all the way up there to give it to her. She's at McCullough's field, way over there in the distance. You know what I'm gonna ask, right? I think I figured it out. But wouldn't it be better for you to give it to her yourself? It's not just the present itself that's important, it's the thought. I understand where you're coming from. 
I think the same thing. I, I, I just can't do it. It makes me dizzy just thinking about it. Okay, I understand. We can help with this last part. We've already come this far. Thank you. I know asking you to do it doesn't make me look very good. So, will you take the tear of the sky to her for me? Rosa Trucks is at the machine... Nah. Mac in a refuge in Mechonis Field. Zorkort cannot go there because of his fear of heights. Take the tear of the sky there for him. Take the tear of the sky to Bozo Trucks. Great. I had a feeling you would. Her name's Bozo Trucks. She's so cute and just amazing. What the hell? Rest assured that your issue will be attended to with haste. Yeah, let's give it her all. I don't know where in Macaws feels she is. The lookout space is confidential, so she's not allowed to tell me. It's called the Machina Refuge. It might be difficult to find. Here in the sky, a rare gemstone that forms in places with a strong sea breeze. All right, that's our goal for today, to get to the Machina Refuge. I'm not climbing all the way back up there again. But then the question becomes, where am I going? <laughs> Ah, I think I see it. It's actually way down there, isn't it? This might actually be slower. It might actually be slower to climb down from up here. I'm gonna die. Uh, yes, thank you, Ryan. What? Don't you dare give up! It's always so funny. Now, climb to the right. And drop. I'm with, I'm with a Zarkord on this. I would not be able to handle this in the slightest. There isn't a path over here. Dark fish. How did a fish get up here? <laughs> Can I try and get to it from here? I'm going to die. I fear I approach my limit. Hang oh. in there. Just a little longer. Oh. You didn't need to climb up those ladders at all. I just completely missed this pathway. <laughs> hey! That's really cool, though. The rotating bulkhead. That would kill you so bad. <laughs> Whoa. How do we get to Mechonis exactly? <laughs> Bionis <laughs> and Mechonis. Oh, it's so different seeing them from this kind of perspective. We cannot see it from here, but our people are still fighting up there. It's difficult to believe that two such huge things ever fought each other. I wonder how the Machina felt at the time. Must have been... horrible. Scary, too. Fear robs us of reason. Out of fear, we commit terrible atrocities. And call them acts of self-preservation. Fear gives rise to more fear. A never-ending circle of hatred. Perhaps... that circle can be broken. Fear. It must be what's driving this. What's made Egil act this way? Oh.
I need to fix that. I, I need I need to fix that. <laughs> I need you to not be dressed how you are. Oh, it, it was just a strange... It was just a strange, um... Culling issue. So it just looked like the pathway stopped far short of the Makanas. Welcome to Makanas Field. It's... <laughs> tweet, tweet. <laughs> it's not much of a field, to be honest. We're inside the Mechonis. Just how I imagined it. It's all totally mechanical. It ain't gonna be easy getting up this thing. Egil is at the top. So from here on out, we'll be climbing up the Mechonis, and as might be expected, we'll basically only be fighting Mechon from here on out. Therefore, there's only really two options we have. We either A, deal with Monado and chant every fight, or B, set things up so that we don't have to worry about Mon Monado and chant. I have chosen to go with the second option. Zebra? What do you mean, zebra? Why are you zebra? Race, cord. Let's kill it. Let's kill zebra. Smack! So I've equipped Melia and Ryan with anti-mechon weapon. Grunt. While we're tr while we're cro cro whoa, while we're climbing the mechonis, there are a few mechon that we should keep an eye out for. Grunt is one of those. They have a chance of dropping certain materials that we can use for an upcoming quest. Oh, you have a spike effect while you're toppled. Well, that's something to keep an eye on for. Other machina that we should me mechon, mechon, that we should work look out for are scouts and honeys. They also drop items that we can use. First lift. Fall panel. Oh. Well, I want to see what's over here first. Oh yeah, we still have some other quests from the hidden machina village that we have to work on. So we can collect bronze wood in this area. Did I get what I needed from the last grunt that we fought? We're looking for reinforced plungers and reinforced cylinders, I think? is this? Oh, this is just a way past that grunt without having to fight it. Unnecessary. Cords, cords, zebras. Oh, we have to go there? And what's with this elevator? You know, I say I want to get to... 
the Machina Refuge, but I'm just kind of wandering it. You know what? Let's keep let's just focus on getting to the Machina Refuge. No getting sidetracked. <laughs> Nice. I don't suppose I can get around you without fighting you, huh? Well, the plot is here. What's up, Shulk? Look, it's a switch to activate a lift. If we can get it to work, it should take us up. Ricky want to ride lift? We can't. There's no power going to it. Boring! What do we do? Well, if we could find the main power supply... Okay, people, let's get looking. Yeah. If we can connect the power to the switch, we should be able to use the lift. Aiming for the top. You want to go to the top level of Mikaas Field, but there's no power to the lift. Use the master power panel to get the lift working again. Use the ground floor master power panel to start the second lift. Is that it? I don't see what the point of this was. Hold on. Items. Ah. That's the second retro diode. Man, I can't wait to see the looks on the faces in Colony 6. How do they know about these things? Juicy steak plant. Cool. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> What was the point of this? <laughs> That's upsetting. <laughs> That's upsetting on a game design level. <laughs> but at least you can control these elevators. <laughs> I was half expecting to have to go back to that other elevator that was bypassing. No. Ah, there's scouts. I'd rather not have to fight you on this pipe. Maybe I'll come around. I'll come around to fight you. Witch. Oops. Why is that one green? I I don't know why that one is green. Moist? Oh. I don't like that. I don't like that you're moist. Aha! Good luck, everyone. Easy. 
Careful now, everyone. Reinforced jet. Rosa Trucks needs two reinforced jets to make the boots. That's both of them. We better get them back to her. The only way that you can get the reinforced jets and the reinforced other ones is by actually fighting these things. They have no trade options, so. They're rarer items, though, so. That'll be a little bit of an issue. Kill it with the chair attack. Ah, well. We'll have another chance at some, at some other point, I guess. Don't like that you're moist. <laughs> Everyone, stay on your guard. Leave this fight to me. Yeah. yeah, sure, it's chain attack. Let's kill it. of methods for bypassing enemies in this game. In this area, I guess. A lot of methods. Oh, no. The other one came with it. Let's get some healing in. Trick, go away. Oh, no, you're still here. Oh, it went away. Pushed it right off the edge. particularly want to fight everything. <laughs> This is the biggest screw I've seen in a long time. At least since that debate. Politics joke. You want to be there. I 
I do appreciate all these methods of getting around enemies in this area. Yeah. There's two more grunts over there. Might kill them. For their parts. I don't want to go through the other two to get to them. Three? How many of them are there? I gave Ryan a bunch of, like, self-sustain. I think Fiora also has some self-sustain as well. You know, I wasn't really sure what I was even fighting at this point. Jesus. Let's get some healing going. Breaker Hand 4? I don't like Breaker Hand 4. Breaker Hand 4 is unfortunate. Ah, good. It's dead. Is it Breaker Hand 4? Oh no, it's Auto Chainsaw. Thank you for these warnings. It's very important that I know that this is happening. And there's a reinforced plunger. How many of those do I have? I don't know. Probably only one. Anyways. Oh. 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 I don't want to fight that. <laughs> Let's fight these other guys instead. Now you shall witness our power. Let me at him. I'm gonna go all out. Your fighting spirit is mine. Double Outside my world is not easy. Let's press on and on and on. Who else wants some? Everyone, stay on your guard. I'm gonna go all out. Manifest yourself. Chain attack. Seize it. Seize it again. Oh good, there's another one. But it has two little guys with it. Eh, kill it. Now you shall witness our power. Leave it to rhyme. I'm gonna go all out. Yeah, well played. <laughs> Was that a little too much? Hey, we have three torch. Wow, wow. Good job, me. You did good work with that. It's not active? What's happening? Oh, yeah! Jeez. That feels like a place that would have an ambush, right? I guess not, though. Good. I wonder if you could just jump from there down to here. Skip all of that. <laughs>
Next time I'm gonna have to do another Collectopedia event. Oh, does this rotate, perhaps? Because I don't understand what that's doing down there. <laughs> Otherwise. Oh, look at this lobster-looking guy! Let's kill him. Love Starlight Kick. <laughs> it's so funny. the mistake of going out over the edge <laughs> with Melia around. Oh, here's a honey. Kill it too. Oh, why not do just the same thing again? Oh, nope. Still here. Oh, this thing's having a bad day. Man, what a bunch of jokers. Right, let's keep going. I have no reason to fight that thing. Well, it's not. It's not quite that thing. What? Onion? Is that unique right there? Amorous Arca. Um, what are you doing up there, guy? And there's a reinforced plunger. Oh, I think we need to get to that. Alright. I don't suppose we can 
just lure the onions here. Nope. Ah. No, not me. Let's go with full healing. Oh, well, I'm attacking you now, I guess. I have a feeling you probably have a spike effect when you're top. Oh, you don't. I was worried for nothing. Keep it toppled. Kill him. There. He's dead. <laughs> I fixed the problem. <laughs> eh, mind blast. And zero gravity. There. He's dead. Just keep hitting them with area effects. Well dead. <laughs> Neat. Here we got an art book for Ryan. What? Doesn't look like it will activate. Allow me to fix this. Hey, what up, Ryan? I'm running around so much. You gotta get us caught. <laughs> that fight went pretty well. Where did that light come from? Why is only one half of the door opening? <laughs> What's this other button do? Oh, a cylinder. But why? But why a cylinder? There doesn't seem too much of a point to this.
We should arrive at the Great Battle Scar soon, I think? Oh, there's a Magna. Hi there. Hi there. I never expected to see any harms all the way up here. You don't look hostile to me. If you want to go up higher, just ride this ventilation duct here. It will carry you up. Cool. That's... an extremely normal thing to happen. Yeah. There's the Great Scar. Really? On the second platform, on the Great Scar, is where the Machina Refuge is. In order to get to it, we'll need to slide down. I believe there are other ways to get to it, but I'm not exactly equipped for it at the moment. Not exactly a secret area. Yeah, we would need to get all the way up there. And then slide down to the second of these little outcroppings. Or is it farther down? No, I think it's above us. As you can see, you can't really get up this. In the original version of the game, you were able to just kind of jump your way up. But apparently, in the definitive edition, your jump height has been reduced, which might explain why I keep getting hung up on things. So if you want to do the same thing, you, you would need to maximize your quick step ability. Let me see. Yeah, we need to get to 25% quick step, which is the max that you can get to. Let's try it. Let's, let's see what we can do with this. Oh, I can just <laughs> run right up it. All right. Hey! <laughs> That's ridiculous! <laughs> Hello, Boza Trucks! Me. A present from Zarkort? What could it be? Wow, it's beautiful! Is it a tear of the sky? I can't believe it! I'll treasure it always! How did he get it? There's no way he could go to the dis to, the, to the distant fingertip. I hope I was of some help. You are a great help, Melia. Never mind. It's the thought that's important. Could you thank him for me? And tell him I can't go back yet? The Mechon have been more active lately, so I can't leave. Rosa Trucks has still not returned to the village, but she's very happy to have a tear of the sky. And now she has her own quest that we can take. The second, let me get some stuff. I think this is just basic quest that this guy has. Me. I really want to thank you. You came all the way. <laughs> You came all the way here to find me and bring Zarko's presents. Tell me in greater detail. Good idea. I'd like to hear more about this too. I want to make you a pair of my special boots. But I might have to give up on that idea. I've just made a pair for Zarkort. I used up all the materials I had with me. And I can't leave here to go and find more. Your special boots? You can really make boots? That's quite a good hobby. I like to think so. I sometimes make boots as well, but Hom's ones. 
I'd be interested in knowing how to make Machina boots. I'm pretty sure I can make boots that will fit you. I look forward to seeing them. We can find the materials. All I need are reinforced jets and reinforced plungers. Hey, we already gathered enough on our way up. Good to keep an eye out for those honeys and scouts and grunts and such. Rosa Trucks wants to make some boots for you as a thank you, but she doesn't have enough materials. Collect what she needs to make some strong boots. Great! I feel strange about you collecting materials for your own gift, but I guarantee that you're gonna love the boots. Rest assured that your issue will be attended to with haste. No, no, no. You're way too stiff. Try this. Gotcha. Leave it to us. I am unfamiliar with such coarse phrasing, but I shall try. Gotcha, friendio. Leave it to us, mate. Is that correct, Charla? And since we already have collected those things on our way up to the Makaris, we can just turn the quest in right now. Have you got the materials? Great. Can you hold on a bit? They'll be ready soon. All done. They should be a perfect fit. I hope they come in useful. I hope I was of some help. Melia, it's okay to be happy. You put in a lot of effort, after all. My apologies. I'm not used to such behavior. You are most kind, Fiora. I'm going back to the village soon. I'll get a replacement, so I'll probably be working down there. I can't wait to see Zarkort. It's been a while since we last met. Yup, Rosa Trucks make the boots. She's thinking about a future with Zarkort. M100 Greaves. With Quick Step 5 on them. Which is appropriate considering how I got up here. <laughs> What do you have, buddy? Talk to me. We're here to observe the Mechon and keep the village safe. It's a worthwhile job. I can spot even their slightest movements. Even so, I'm still just watching. I'm not able to destroy them. Sorry to ask, but could you destroy some Mechon for me? The targets are three M66 tricks. Are you willing to help? Repel the enemies that threaten the safety of the Machina and Hidden Village. Sure. It would be nice to get this at the bottom when we were climbing up and fighting things. But sure, we'll have this now. So you might notice that all of these quests so far have been timed quests, like the ones with Alchemoth. All of Zarkort's quests, Bozoktrox's quest, these minor quests that this garrison troop is giving to us. It, it won't be until after we reach Agnaratha that we lose access to these quests, so it's not something to stress about, but it is important to deal with them before reaching... Well, I guess I've avoided saying it so far, but Mekonis Core. The cutoff for the Alchemoth quests and these quests is Mekonis Core. Once you reach the center of the Mekonis, you're going to lose access to a bunch of quests. Thank you. May Lady Mayneth protect you. She is protecting us. Right, Fiora? Right? What do you need? There are a couple of Mechon that are targeting us. One called Revolutionary Bifrons is really powerful. <laughs> Could you help out again? Revolutionary Bif... 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 Near Power Supply Area 1 in Mechon's field. Thanks a lot. Revolutionary Bifrons is near Power Supply Area 1 on Level 4. May Lady Nainath protect you. What do you need? There's one more Mechon targeting us. If Infernal Cross... Cro what the fuck? Crossell was destroyed, the village will be safe. Will you do it? I really appreciate it. Infernal Crossell is near Power Supply Area 2 on Level 4. Watch your footing while you're fighting it. I'm well known for my footing. I, a clumsy fool. What do you have in your shop? Ooh. Better weapons? Neat. Anyways, I'll deal with this later. I'll deal with the shop later. Uh, we've reached the Machina Refuge. 
as such, I'll call for this episode. Next episode, we're finally entering the Mechonis. I wouldn't sit there. <laughs> That's just asking for pain. <laughs>